Looking through the script like Early morning to the midnight Better play like This is what it hit like When I need a little get right Better sit tight Feel like the new level Come with a new devil In the store like Pulling out the resellers Every sentence, every detail Face to east and I pray I, I pray I, I pray Seem like the new level Come with a new devil Cut on that A I know that it need to die. Here's what I'm feeling inside. I wanna ride. Terry just fly through the sky. Faster than you blink your eye. This is a grind. Building these bricks till it's time. Look for redemption is nigh. She love my vibes. She love the look in my eyes. She know that I am the prize. And only need a brother if you really about winning it. Only need a sister if she really, really feminine. Get a little spicy or something like cinnamon. But when I'm away, yeah, she always checking in. Better than the average. No, she's not a feminist. And she knows she'll never get preeminence. And she understand what her position is. And she know I'm all about my father's business. Preparing myself for the search of my father's. I'm in it like every day. Paint a picture with scriptures to bar and eight. Sees a boat, gotta go like you running late. I got leaders around me, got teachers around me. That judgment on ring, let it circulate. The sons of the king and they perpetrate. Shake them down with a script, watch them percolate. Damn, game time. No time for the game time. Catch a heathen like him and call it hang time. Rain time, that's on my mind. Got a lot to lose, not a little bit. And everything that gains, so we get it in. Real juice, real change, and they can't know. When the cloud touch down, and they can't go. It's real. Look through the script like early morning to the midnight. Better play like this is what it is like. When I need a look, get right. Better sit tight. Feel like the new level. Come with a new devil. Join the sword like pulling out the resellers. Every sentence, every detail, face the east, and I pray. I, I pray.
don't like it, be hit them. Uh, break them to pieces and shred them. Make sure they know that it's pressure, pressure, pressure. You want the truth? Well, here's the lecture. Doctor, get by this one called a stretcher. Look for the king to come from the heavens. 12 like 1 plus 11. Go. Yeah, 12 by 12, Israel on the rise. Represent this one for the tribes. In my head, dreams of eat them, dying. This that juvenile want that smoke. Sons of thunder, bring that fire. Yeah, I got a lot on my plate. Better be sure I'ma eat it. He told me go out to the sheep. And you better know I'ma feed them. Yeah, 12 by 12, Israel on the rise. Represent this one for the tribes. Cool, dry bone from the neck to the hip to the thigh bone. Ain't no valley too dry, we gon' rise on them. Mr. Body, your crack is alive, homie. You holding the secret. Cat out the back, you can stop it. We seen it. Blacks and Hispanics were born for the kingdom. You tried to mislead them. Them lies that you tell us gonna cost you your freedom. We want the smoke. We challenge your boots on the ground. We alive and we standing up. Today I got time. We pressing you. We ain't gonna stop and get tired. We got stamina. How you gonna stop what we know? My people been mad. They won't smoke. This get back gonna keep us afloat. And these scriptures is murder. She wrote. Whoa. Used to be blind. Now I can see with my mind. Scriptures, they open my eyes. And now it's just pressure, pressure, pressure. My people about it. We really, I had a promise. Go let you know. We got next. We the best. We won't whoa. How they gonna stop us when we got the ghost? Holy smokes. Yeah, 12 by 12. Israel on the rise. Represent this one for the tribes. In my head, dreams of eat them, dying. This that juve and want that smoke. Sons of thunder, bring that fire. Yeah, I got a lot on my plate. Still moving, but spirit dead. Rigor mortis. Life is bodies with no breath. We dead corpses. But think about it, we top shelf. No one above us. But way down with a life of sin, we can't ignore it. I gotta rise for the case and teach repentance to my nation. Ain't got time for vacation. Yeah, it's crunch time. Destroying lies, occupation. Open eyes, takes patience. Do or die for creation. We on the front lines. Reporting live with the dry bones. We saving lives. Prophesied different time zone. Let go of pride or you die. Cause your mind gone. I feel alive when I cry. For my people, a black foot got the earth shook. Open up the book, take a look. Get your doctor cook. We got time to do it. Cast it down. Every imagination that you ever knew. Sick with it. Leave your past sniffing. Nah, no, it ain't the flu. This word burn. Yeah, this word burn. Deep in my chest. I must release. Lord, I got release. All of this stress. If you don't feel it, then it's count down to your last breath. Try for the truth. Yeah, the truth to your death. Your salvation is closer than you ever felt. On that day, yeah, the elements, they gon' melt. The sun and thunder paint a picture that you. You can't sell a host of angels waiting to beam us up into the heavens. Come. I don't think they understand what they dealing with. The purple is a problem. Wanna solve it just like Dylan did. I'm talking Mr. Roof, red dog, clipper roof. Christians gave us forgiveness, but they brought us their shoot. That's the truth. I salute to all the warriors before us. Only mission is restore us, but our own people love horse. Slave minds still in Egypt, but no longer worship horse. Go to Sunday service just to get to see my season boarded, so I had to skip the chorus. Ain't no play for these demons for whatever reason. They cleaving, I can't hang with a heathen. I'm warning for treason for preaching Christ. Can't to save my kinfolk, but culture choir still ain't caught the tempo they want to see us praise dance but i'm trying to see the rain man they can't relate to all this pain man unapologetic for apologetic sons of mark reiser they said they want to be what is the war it hit like lightning and it's fighting with your faith weak so rest with us until you can't sleep working for a kingdom man it ain't cheap many words and it started sound like music but i'm only justified if i do it so i do it it's a movie and we all about that action gotta get that restitution so i'm moving with a faction better yet this is my family in the bible is our history Come here, take a look, then watch your nation get cooked, huh?
So you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need a guide. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah, so you want to be a, so you want to be a prophet. Let me go ahead and hip you to this topic. First things first, dust off your feet. Christianity, you got to drop it. The way of the world is not knowledge. You can't learn this wisdom in college. You better repent of your sins. You're going to lose some friends, but endure to the end. Don't be sadist. So let me show you how to move, little buddy. I'm a teacher, truth, everything, new, little buddy. Don't listen to these pastors. They some fools, little buddy. You gon' see opposition, but stay cool, little buddy. This the truth. Uh, just trust the process. If you're diligent, you will see progress. Hold the spirit into end. You a prophet. Meditate day and night to see success. So you gotta make a. Let me let me show you how to. Yeah. So you wanna be a prophet. Well, you know you need a guide. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah. So you want to be a prophet, built for the ministry, fit for the battle, go to war against the enemy, gotta fight the sin with the same big energy, heal them old wounds with the word, that's the remedy, better call a doctor, really seek counsel, go number one, get a gate with a bouncer, big black angel in it, ain't no way around them, late for the fakes that you don't want to drown in, hot damn, nation on the brain, then you gotta change, set your house in order and reform your ways, stand up like a man, give it all you can, couple that with fear, then you'll understand, never be a Shame, world without end, going hard for the Lord like times in. You can never do enough when you serve it. God blessed with a purpose, and you can't pay for the spirit. Nope, baptized in his name, not a sin of soap. If your mind ain't right, you can never get it. You can forget it, though repenting and get forgiven. It don't mix with iniquity, got me feeling like Philip. Can you need a man, need a guide through the scripture to come and sit with you, see Christ in the first leadership, paint pictures, one for the bouquet, high definition. So you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need a guide. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah, so you want to be a... That's a real good feeling, low key. Knowing God can make a profit out of little low me. It's refreshing to hear words of life. Got me feeling like I could be something better than the things that I see. Cause I was raised in the valley of death with no leaders. Pastor just teach for a check, no real preachers. OGs tell us take drugs, tow heaters. But where the hell is that gon' lead us? Man, look, it's getting old. It ain't no father figures in the home. So we had to figure it out on our own. How to be a man just to figure it out later on. That everything we thought we had figured I was wrong. Been left without God, it's too long. So jail in the grave. Y'all, that's where they got us thinking we belong. Can't even imagine ourselves being great. Meanwhile, we the children of God all alone. It's deeper than a song. This the rising of the dry bones with the sinews and the flesh coming on. And we got the breath of life coming through the nose. Standing up on our feet in the middle of the road. Trying to save souls. Giving out ops. Choose you this day. A nigga or a prophet. Made up my mind. I got no other options. I want to be a prophet. Woo. So you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need a guide. You say you want to be a prophet? Well, you know you need guidance. Yeah, so you want to be a... Testing. testing, testing, one, two. Are we live yet? <clears throat> uh, yeah, we're going to send up prayers. We live? We on? All right. Israel, we're going to send up prayers. We're coming to you with your daily bread. What prayer you want to read? Uh,
got it. All right. Got to find a prayer real quick. Read that in 147. We're going to blow up the trumpets. All right. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. For it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doeth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meek and he casteth down the wicked to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who's covereth the heaven with the clouds, who's prepared the rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens with crack. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. Stop in verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure and them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today, O Lord, for raising us up, Father God, to bring your word, to bring the daily bread that our people need to govern their lives so that we may be entitled to the kingdom that you promised our forefathers from the covenant that you made with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Restore your wisdom upon us, O Lord, and give us edification out of your word so that we may gain success in the end, and that is indeed the kingdom, Father God. And Lord, bless all those that has elements that is sick amongst us. Remove from them speedily, Father God, those elements, the Lord, that is, that is based upon um, them returning to you, Father God. So in your son Jesus' name, I pray, Father God, amen. All right, Israel. We're going to jump right into it, right into it. All right, so the name of this class. Okay, I can see myself right there. <clears throat> All right, the name of this class is When God Turn His Back and Show His Wrath. So when God turn his back and show his wrath. So we don't want to be around when this happens. And if we, and if we are around, we want the most high God to save us from this. All right. So we're going to start in Jeremiah um, 18 and 11. And then we're going to jump to verse 15 through 17. All right. So read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 11. Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you. So the Lord said, Look, I'm going to frame evil against you. Anytime the Lord frame evil or he bring his wrath or destruction, it's because we move God to wrath through our disobedience. And God turned his back on us. Read. And devise a device against you. Uh huh. Return ye now. Every one from his evil way. Because we was evil. So it turned God to wrath. It turned God to do evil against us, Read And make your ways and your doings good. Uh-huh. And they said, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. And we will every one do the imagination of his heart. Read verse 15. Verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me. They have burnt incense to vanity. Still to this day. Guess what? We go out and our people have forgotten God. They don't know the color of Christ. They don't know the color of God. They don't believe in this Bible whatsoever. And when we bring it to their attention, they rebel against God's words. Because guess what? The knowledge of God ain't taught in your churches, your schools. It is not taught nowhere on earth but in the Israelite schools, in Israel United in Christ, and some of the other camps as well, bring forth God, law, statutes, and commandments. But outside of the Israelites, guess what? There's no knowledge of God in the earth. Read. Because my people have forgotten me. Uh huh. They have burnt incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways. 
from the ancient past. What are the what what caused them to stumble in their ways? And what is the ancient path? Give me that in Exodus real quick. I don't think I got this down. Exodus 18 and verse 20. Get that real quick. Just Exodus 8, 18 and 20. That's it. That's the only verse. Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. Uh-huh. And thou shalt teach them, di- and thou shalt teach them ordinances uh-huh. and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. Uh-huh. And the work that they must do. It says, Thou shalt show them the ways that they may walk, meaning walking after the law, statutes, and commandments. So though that's what they stumbled in their ways from the ancient past, because in the ancient time we knew the laws and we kept the laws. Now we have forgotten totally what we're supposed to be doing, what the mission is, the whole duty of man. That's our mission. That's the reason why we was created, to come to earth to do the bidding of the Lord. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they have burnt incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways. they burn burning incense to vanity. What's vanity? Christmas, Easter. Um, um, Valentine's Day, all of these wicked days that don't have no real God behind them, and it don't get us no type of benefits. Nothing but it, it only benefit the other nations because they make tons of money off of us. They make billions and trillion. It's a billion dollar, it's a trillion dollars, it's a million dollar industry off of the black dollar. Read on. They have burnt incense to vanity. Uh huh. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways. Stumble in their ways from what? From the ancient past. Meaning they're supposed to be walking and living after the laws, statutes, and commandments. Read. To walk in paths. Uh huh. In a way not cast up. Read. To make their land desolate. Uh huh. In a perpetual hissing. Every one that passes thereby shall be astonished. And wag his head. Now when they look, look at when the when the other nations pass by in the ghetto. They riding by to the stores, the corner stores that they own, and they riding through the ghetto. Guess what? They looking at an astonishment, wagging and shaking their head, hissing like, man, these blacks, boy, they can't unify for nothing. But we still can set our stores up in their communities and make money and bring it back to our nation of people all the way across seas. But guess what? The Lord going to change something in our mind. Read on. To make their land desolate uh-huh. in a perpetual hissing, everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. Read. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. God said he's going to scatter us. He did that. We all over the earth. That's the reason why he said, look, this gospel shall be preached to the four corners of the earth and every nation because we were scattered amongst every nation. We're going to further elaborate on that as the class go on. Read. I will show them the back and not the face. Hold on. What it means when God said, hey, look, I'm going to show them the back. I ain't even going to show them my face because when I turn my back on you so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native American, this is for you to understand that I need to get you to see something. I need to get you to turn from your wicked ways and let all this evil come upon you so that you can be drawn closer to me. When are we going to get it, Israel? Is we going to get it today, tomorrow, or never? Some of us ain't going to get it at all. Read on. I will show them the back. God said he turned his back on us. Read. And not the face. Uh Uh-huh. In the day of their calamity. He said you ain't even going to look at my face. Just like the heathen that he set up over us in a time of slavery, we couldn't give them no eye contact. God said, I'm going to deal with you the same way. Don't even look at my face. You look at the back. Hold your head down. Read on. Then said oh, no, no, they. No, 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 no. Hold that. My bad. I'm, trying to, I'm going too fast. My bad. My bad. Hey, jump to Proverbs. Because God said he turned his back on us. He ain't showing us his face no more. And we're in the midst of all calamity. Proverbs 1, verse 24 through 27. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Uh Uh-huh. Because I have called, and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regards. God said, I call, you refuse. Just like he said, I knocked on the door. You you got folks, hey, you knock on their door, they ain't answering. They looking out the window, though. Ah, there go, uh, 
and go to dang on human resource department from DHS. Yeah, they coming for you. They coming to take your child because you done posted a video of you smoking marijuana in the front seat with your son. And he all about two months. All people do sinful acts that they really don't understand the detriment that they're getting themselves into. But he says God scratched forth his hand and we refuse. Out of all the things that we have been through, we want to refuse the one God that is set up to help us out of the captivity that we're in. Because he put us in there because of our disobedience. Read on. But ye have said it no. Uh-huh. All thy counsel. God said, look, y'all said it not. Y'all disregard the counsel that I gave you. I gave you the Bible. It's called Bible. They say it's for basic instruction before leaving earth. I gave you instructions before you leave the earth so you could get your, your soul right for when it's coming time for judgment. But all people say that not. And they think God is just some big fairy tale. Now, God got a sense of humor, and we're going to read about it. Read what you got. It was none of my reproof. And they don't want none of God's reproof. Read. I also will laugh at your calamity. God got a sense of humor. God said when you in the midst of your affliction, when you getting jammed up, when them dogs getting set on you, when you getting, getting um hosed down by the fire department, the Edomite fire department, Back in in the um, slavery days, and that water coming out, shooting you all upside your head, shooting you down the street. God said, guess what? That's going to be real funny to me. God said, when you march and, and no justice and no peace, and they come and sick those dogs on you, and they come out there with that tear gas, God said, guess what? I'm going to be in the heavens laughing at my people because it's simple to keep his commandments versus going against him. You don't know what you up against. You up against the one true God that got all type of ways to destroy you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Read. I will mock when your fear coming. God said, I'm going to mock. Look at, look, look at, look at that nigga right there. <laughs> yeah, look at him run. Look at, hey, hey, shoot that gun. Boom. Hit him in the back of the head. Take him clean out of here. God said he laughing at those things because our people rebel and turn against from the most important information that's on the face of the earth. And that's the Bible. God, where you read? When your fear cometh as desolation uh -huh. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Come like what? As a whirlwind. Read. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. It says he's going to come like a whirlwind. You know, a whirlwind, it comes out of nowhere and start forming and start destroying everything in its path. I think they said uh, the, the cold air go up or come down and the hot air go up and, and it forms this tunnel and make it. Now, God called it a whirlwind, but now in today's society, we call it the tornado. So we're going to get a video. Hey, give me that video, the first video of that um, F5 tornado. Get the disclaimer. So this was one of the worst tornadoes that hit the U.S. in 1925. Started over. On this date, in 1925, the worst tornado in U.S. history passes through eastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and southern Indiana, killing 695 people, injuring some 13,000 more, causing 17 million in property damage. Known as the Tri-State Tornado, Look at that. Dudley Twister began That's the lower wrath when he Ellington, turned his Missouri, back. But southern Illinois was the hardest hit. More than 500 of the total 695 people who perished were killed in southern Illinois, including 234 in Murfreesboro and 127 in West Frankfurt. Tri-state tornado of 1920 traveled a thousand and 3,000 3 injuries. On the ground, so they just given a rough square estimate. Miles and had a diameter of more than a mile and traveled at speeds of excess of 70 miles. That's the type of guy we want to play with. Man, come on. Hey, do we got that, um, that video? Did we ever find a video of the tornado? Like an actual tornado to show the people uh, God wrath in HD. Yeah, just go to that first. It don't matter. All 
right, let's see what we got. We got any sound on it? And that be these dang on storm chaser. Hey, you know that ain't nobody but Esau. You know we ain't getting all that. Uh, we I mean, hey, forget, but we ain't getting out there. We ain't getting out there chasing no storm because we we actually fear the Lord. They like to play and stuff like that. Oh, look at it! It's forming now. Nah, I'm trying to be in a bunker somewhere, underground when God come through. Just like the children of Israel, man, in Exodus 19, I think, verse 8. And uh, now I'm just referencing when um the Lord showed um the Lord came down with thundering and lightning. And then, hey, Israel said, hey, Moses, look, hey, we're going to need you to deal with us because we is in fear that we may die when the Lord come down here to deal with us. I just want a small snippet of a clip just to get a people a glimpse of God wrath on earth. God used these things and these things was created for the vengeance of the most high God to take our brothers and sisters off the earth and not only them, the heathen as well. Yeah, we got to move a clip. Yeah, yeah, that one right there. A real dark one. Look at that. That dang on horse got out of there. Now, this is what they be chasing. It's storm chasing. And this thing rips concrete. Uh, a F5 tornado is one of the worst torn tornadoes. It rips the house. From the foundation, it cracks concrete. Man, it does all type of thing, man, when it comes to destroying. Destroy just about everything in its path. You you basically don't want to be um you basically don't want to be above ground up. You wanna be underground somewhere. Look, they done ran in the barn with all them dang on metal objects. Yep, there go that wind. And it said, uh, F, you, can, you can stop that. It says an F5 tornado can reach up to speeds from 261 miles per hour to roughly like 300 miles per hour. You don't want to play with God. That type of wind rolling that fast? Nah, that ain't the type of wrath that I'm, I'm willing to see. I'd just rather just go on ahead on and take the easy ride out and keep God law, statutes, and command. So that's the whirlwind. All right, so go from there. Go to Ecclesiastes 43. And we're going to read 28 and verse 29. Yeah, Sirach, 43, 28 and verse 29. These are God's works that he created so that he could take people off the earth that was in opposition of him. Read what you got. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 43, verse 28. Uh-huh. How shall we be able to magnify him? Uh-huh. For he is great above all his work. He said he's a great, even that tornado right there, that F9, the F5 nine, F tornado, guess what? He greater than that. So we don't understand the severity of how much power God really possessed. Read. The Lord is terrible and very great. See, they don't read this in the Christian church. They just tell you, oh, God is all loving and he's love, love, love. But the scripture said God is what? The Lord is terrible. It's very great. Yeah, he's loving, but what about the terrible side of God? What about when you drive God to wrath to make him want to come here and destroy you off the face of the earth? What about that God? What about that side of God? What about the hate side of God? 
But they don't tell you about that because they keep you confused to where they are not seriously trying to get your soul to the salvation that was promised from your forefathers, the covenant that God made with them. They ain't trying to get you that salvation. Read on. And marvelous in his power. And it's marvelous in his power. We just saw some of God's power. We just saw the power of God. And there's going to be other videos that we get that we're going to show God wrath and power in other areas and aspects. All right? So we're going to go there. Go to Proverbs 1, verse 28. So when all people, when they decide to call on God, guess what? It be the times like that. When they was running in those barns, that's when all people, Lord, please help me. Lord, help me, please. Help me, please, Lord. Help me, please. No, nah, ain't no help me, please. God's up in the heavens laughing at you. He's looking at you. Look at look at that over there running. I hear them knives. That wind finna take them knives and shoot them knives through the walls, and it's going to cut him, go straight through his shoulder. He going to bleed out, and he going to have a slow death. But read that, Proverbs 128. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28. Uh-huh. Then shall they call upon me. It says, in the wrath and the time of all affliction, that's when we want to call on God. But how God going to act towards us? Read. But I will not answer. God said, look, I ain't listening, nigga. I ain't listening to you. My ears are closed. They are shut. Because when you turned against me, when I sent the prophets out there on Beale Street, and you turned against me that night, three months later, yes, I had you killed. I had you set up by your girlfriend, which you don't supposed to have, and she let Tyrone, Jeffrey, and um, um, little J.J. Ray Ray kick the dough in while you got your pants down. Yeah, she set you up. And you wanted to get feisty, so they put a bullet in your head. So they stabbed you to death. So they set you on fire. They did all of these things to you all because you was in error and in opposition of the Most High God. Read on. But I will not answer. Uh huh. They shall seek me early. Then you're going to want to pray. Read. But they shall not find me. But you ain't going to find God in that time because it was meant for you to die at that specific time, at that specific place during that day, that particular day. That was your expiration clock. Because we got a due day. I mean, we got a birthday, which is one day when we born actually into the earth. And we got a due date, which is our death day when we die. And we're living in the midst of that time frame right there. And that's God's mercy that we're living in. It'll behoove you not to keep these law, statutes, and commandments. All right, there. We we're going to go from there to Hosea 5. Hosea 5. Um, I'm going to try to make it through it, um, the whole class, Israel. But, uh, hey, let God be the judge. Hosea, start with 5. And then go from 5 to 10 and go from 10 to 15. Hosea chapter 5, verse 5. No, 6. My bad. 6, 10, and 15. No, uh, Hosea 5, 6. Hosea 5, 10. And Hosea 5, 15. Hosea chapter 5, verse 6. Uh huh. They shall go with their flocks uh -huh. and with their heads. And with their herds to uh -huh. seek the Lord. They shall go to seek the Lord, read. But they shall not find him. But the Lord ain't going to be found by them, read. He hath redrawn himself from them. God turned his back on them. And he's showing them his wrath. Read on. Verse 10. Verse 10. Uh-huh. The princes of Judah uh -huh. were like them that removed the bound. Uh-huh. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath he upon them. You will pour out what? My wrath upon them. God said he's going to pour out his wrath upon us. Read. Like water. It says like what? Like water. Remember that, Israel. God going to pour his wrath out on us like water. Read verse 15. Verse 15. Uh-huh. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their own fit. God said, look, I'm going to go and return to my place. I'm going to go back up to the third heavens and stop dealing with Israel for a while. Read. Till they acknowledge they're a fit. They got to first acknowledge that they are in the midst of sin and repent. Read. 
and seek my face. Then after you repent, you're going to seek God's face and keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, simply doing what he said. Read. In their affliction, uh -huh. they will seek me early. When we get afflicted, that's when we run to the Most High God. But remember, it says, I'm going to pour my wrath out like water. So when did God literally pour his wrath out on us like water? We're going to read about it. You want to hear? Here it go. Give me Genesis 6 and verse 5. 5, 6, and 7. Genesis 6, 5, 6, and 7. This is when God actually poured his wrath out on us like water. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. I told you God got a sense of humor. We just play around too much with the Lord of this Bible that has these wrath and destruction set out for our were demise. Read what you got. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. So just like he saw it back then, this is the beginning of time. Genesis is in the beginning. Just like then, he saw that man was wicked and the earth was full with the wickedness of man. Just like in 2023, they passing all type of laws that, that you can be binary, transitory, um, everything but ordinary. Read what you got. <laughs> it's crazy. We can't even be originally how God intended us to be, male and female. What I feel, I went to the dang on um, doctor office and got a dang on physical. I see um, your sex up there. They had sex, male or female, and then they had binary, and they had some more stuff. But I mean, why make it complicated? Either either you gonna identify as a male or a female. But I'm telling you, hey, this world is drawing closer and closer to. God sending his son back to return to the earth to destroy everything except for the righteous. Read what you got. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Uh-huh. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So when we, when we read, we read uh, about, I think that it's in Mark 7, 21, where it goes into like all our, all our, um, Everything that we deal with in our mind. Don't get it. I'm just referring it. I'm referencing it. But everything we deal with in our mind, covetousness, lust, hatred, malice, envy, all of those sins that we deal with in our mind to where God know. God said, I formed you. I knew you before I formed you in the womb. So it ain't no getting around God. He know our mind ain't right. He know that the only thing that's right if it was when our mind is fixated on his word. But continue to read on. And it repented the Lord uh -huh. that he had made man on the earth. Hey, look, don't be the one where God looked down on the earth from the third heavens. And he was like, you know what? I hate I even create this creation on earth. I got to read and spew this creation out, especially the, the, the black, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American that was created in the land of of this captivity, Babylon, the great spiritually, that the Bible speak of. No, 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 no. God got to look down and say, ah, I got to I, I, I gotta, I gotta get him off. He, he's causing too much confusion. He's destroying life that was set up. to Because God, when God created us, he created everything to live. But we came down here and we just put everything to death. We put man to death. We put the dang on um, crops to death. We put the animals to death. Everything is being defiled. Zoonosis, they get um, slicing the genes of, of, of different species and linking them to uh, the human species and creating all type of pestilence and, and, and all type of illnesses that, that comes against us to kill us, to put everything to death. It's a virus. This other nation, that Edomite nation, Esau, is a virus to God's earth. And everybody that follow him and do his bidding, God is going to kill you. Not just your body physically, but spiritually, your soul as well. Read on. It, it grieved him at his heart. Uh-huh. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Uh-huh. Both man he gonna, and beast. He's going to destroy man, beast, read. And the creeping thing. He's going to destroy the creeping thing, read. And the fowls of the air. All the birds, read. For it repenteth me 
that have made them. So don't don't be the one that God looked down on earth and he said, I hate I made that creation right there. Yeah, Alfonso, yeah, you're going to die tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Yep, yeah, yep, you got to go. Yep. <laughs> and why you running, trying to run from death? God already sealed us. That death spirit is sealed. The deaf spirit, he rejoiced at the commandments when God said, go down there and kill that nigga on that nag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and get him off. That, get him out of here. Yeah, I see his soul when he come back. But read on. No, 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 but no. Because in that time, God killed a lot of all people. It, God killed the entire earth. He killed everybody except eight souls. So now, it's prophesied in the Bible that he's going to do it again. What you going to be doing in that time where God sent his wrath back on earth to kill everybody but the righteous? Get that in Zechariah 13 and verse 8. So God looked down and out, saw all sins. God said, look, I got to kill him. It's prophesied to happen again. That's why it'll behoove you not to get in this book and learn your nationality and learn what you're supposed to do. Read what you got. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass. It says, it shall. Real quick, I'm going to tell you something. When God said it shall happen, it will indeed happen. No, no, no. Keep on going. That in all the land, uh-huh. saith the Lord. Two parts therein shall be cut off. Guess and what? Two thirds of this earth is going to be put to death. Read. But the third shall be left therein. But one third, which is the righteous, the Israelites, you so called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, God said, I'm going to save them. All right, go, to, go back to Genesis 6 and 8. Because what saved Noah in the time of the flood? And everybody that was with him. What saved those eight souls? So that you can know when God come back this time to destroy the earth the second time. Because everybody know, hey, he destroyed the earth with water the first time. How he coming back? Oh, with fire. So what are you doing so that you don't get that nuclear destruction that's to come? What you doing? So what did Noah do in the time of that? In the ancient time, what did he do for God to basically save him in the eight souls? Now, save him along with his family, which is eight souls. Read that in Genesis 6 and 8. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. Uh-huh. But Noah found grace. He found what? Found grace. So we playing with God grace. It says Noah found grace. Read. In the eyes of the Lord. Jump to verse 22. So Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Are you going to find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Read what you got. Verse 22. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him. He did what? According to all that God commanded him. Read. So did he. So Noah did. Give me that in um, Sirach 44, 17. So Noah found grace in the eyes of God simply because Noah did all according to the commands that God gave him. And we're not just talking about the 10. The book from Genesis all the way to Revelation is full with law, statutes, and commandments that we must commit. I mean, that we must keep. We must keep them all with the exception of anything pertaining to the sacrificial laws because Christ came and fulfilled the suffering and died as the sacrificial lamb. So we don't have to sacrifice for our sins no more. We just have to believe on Christ sincerely in the faith of Christ and the laws of the commandments. We got to keep those two. All right, read what you got. Ecclesiasticus chapter 44 verse 17. Uh Uh-huh. Noah was found perfect. He was found what? Found perfect. What happened to uh, Christ was the only perfect man. He was the only perfect perfect person in the Bible. No, nah, look, somebody then told you wrong. And most likely it's the Christian church, Christian sanity under that doctrine. They insane in those buildings. They fight. They do all type of wickedness. But meanwhile, they can't tell you nothing out of the Bible because God ain't dealing with them. But it says Noah was found perfect. Read. And righteous. Uh huh. In the time of wrath. It says he was found perfect and righteous when God brought his wrath upon the earth. Hold that. We're going to come back to that and give me the righteousness. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. 
Because it says Noah was found perfect and he was found righteous. Let's see what this righteousness um, is going into. Read that in Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Uh-huh. And it shall be our righteousness. Uh-huh. If we observe to do. It says, what, what's that word after righteousness? If. If. It's a stipulation. Read. We observe to do all these commandments. That's what I said. From Genesis to the Revelation, we have commandments that we must keep with the exemption of the sacrificial laws. This is our righteousness, us observing and keeping all the commandments that God said. So, yes, brothers, if you shaving your beard, you got to grow a beard. How hard is that? We don't want brothers coming around with the, the clean face, trying to, trying to act like you 10 years younger. No, bro, put a beard on your face. Pull up your pants. Look, deal with the sister righteously. Prove her. And once you prove her, see if y'all fit for marriage. Don't do nothing in opposition of what the scriptures say. Keep the Sabbath day. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. Stop lying on your brother. Stop shooting and killing one another. These are simple things that we must come back to doing. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 17. Uh-huh. Noah was found perfect uh -huh. and righteous Read. in the time of wrath. Read. He was taken in exchange for the world. He said he was taken in exchange. How are you going to be taken in exchange for the world if you following the word? Read on. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the, unto the earth uh -huh. when the flood came. An everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. I right, read it again from the top. No one was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. Right, right. So I said somebody need to cor cor correct. I said it'll behoove you not to keep the commandments. Hey, no, you need to keep the commandments. Hey, that's what we that's what this class is for. Keeping the commandments so that we won't see the wrath of God and different ways of how he destroyed us so that we could come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. So no. It don't behoove you not to keep the commandments. You better keep them. Yeah. Don't let, hey, listen. All men are liars. Hey, I'm just going to tell you straight up. I ain't right without this book. Yeah. If it wasn't for this book, I'd still be wrong. All right, Israel. So bear with me. All right. So where we was at? Verse uh, 17. Verse 17. I read the end of um, verse 17 where it says, In the time of his wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. Uh huh. Therefore, was he left as a remnant unto the earth? It says he was left as a remnant unto the earth. Read. Uh, when the flood came. So he was left as a remnant to the earth when God sent the destruction of the flood. All right. So, and Noah, Noah was righteous um, while the earth was corrupt. So guess what? God is coming back for the righteous. That's 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 um. God is coming back for the righteous amongst the corrupt world that we live in today, in society. Everything's is is in opposition of God and us because we keep God laws. All right. So from there we're gonna go to James four and four. Because if you make an alliance with the world, if you feel like you're supposed to be associated with the world, you're supposed to follow the world. Then guess what? You can't possibly be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of this Bible because the world is in opposition of God. And when you follow the world, you are now in opposition of God. Read what you got in James 4 and 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. Uh-huh. Ye adulterers and adulterers. It's, see there, the world, it makes the adulterers and the adulterers comfortable. Because there's no correction when you're in the world for these type of spirits right here. And these type of spirits will get you killed. Get your head peeled back to the white meat. Yeah, that's, that's old school. Y'all don't know nothing about that. If you if you're 30 and up, 30 and up, I get 30 and up. I'm showing my age a little bit. All right, go ahead. Read on. Ye adulterers uh -huh. and adulteresses. Read. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity. With God. That enmity with God meaning, guess what? You in opposition of God. The one created you. You're going in total opposition of God. Read. Whosoever therefore 
will be a friend of the world. Uh huh. Is the enemy of God. It says, if you friend of this world, guess what? You God's enemy. So when we when God sent His Son to come back, you on the hit list. You on the top ten, the top five hit list of God because you His you are considered His enemy. Yes, you. Yes, that's the reason why He said First John two fifteen, love not the world, neither the things are in it. But our people get confused because of the Christianity doctrine to tell us, oh, for God so love the world. Well, why he saying for God so love the world? And then another verse he's saying, look, love not the world. There's some confusion in that. Why? Because you are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments so God can give that wisdom and understanding to you. That word is talking about Israel, according to Isaiah 45, 17. Read that in your spare time. All right, so we're going to go from there. Go back to Genesis 6, verse 11 real quick. So, yes, when you form an alliance with this world, you become God's enemy. So get that. Go back to Genesis. We're going to read Genesis 6, 11 through 13. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. Uh-huh. The earth also was corrupt before God. Read. And the earth was filled with violence. Uh-huh. It's filled with violence now. Read on. And God looked upon the earth. Uh-uh. That's 6 and 11? Uh, violet, filled with violence is the end. Okay. All right. So if the earth is filled with violence. It's because the people on the earth has become God's enemy. Through what? Through their disobedience. So God is putting them to death. It's so many people that die on a regular, all because of the disobedience going against God. Read verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, uh -huh. and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, mm -hmm. for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them God with said, the earth. God said, I'm going to destroy them with the earth. So Noah and his family was the only one that found grace through obedience, obeying the law, statutes, and commandments that God gave them. Everybody else, guess what? They was killed. They didn't have that grace that Noah had because they was walking in opposition. They was disobeying God, law, statutes, and commandments. Go to the seventh chapter and give me Genesis 7, 16 through 19. And we're going to speed read through this real quick. Genesis chapter 7, verse 16. Uh-huh. And they that went in. They that went in, the eight, with Noah, read. Went in, male and female of all flesh. And when I say with Noah, that's include Noah. The eight include him. It ain't eight and then he's the ninth one. He is within the eight. It says then what? And they, and they that went in, went in, male and female of all flesh. Uh-huh. And God had commanded them commanded him uh -huh. and the lord shut him in it says they went in male and females of all flesh talking about the animals it says but god god the lord shut him in so that means the lord took his hand and closed up the door of the ark so guess what noah couldn't go in opposition of god because god closed the door so it ain't no getting in it ain't no getting in when God sent his wrath. Your due date is here. It ain't no turning back. It's sealed, signed, and delivered with the hand of the Most High God. Read on. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased uh -huh. and bear up the ark. Uh -huh. And it was lift up above the earth. It says it was lift above the earth. Read. And the waters prevailed. It were increased greatly upon the earth. Uh -huh. And the ark went upon the face of the water. Verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heavens were covered. It says all the high hills, all the mountains was covered. God let pour out the depths of the rainwater and, and, and open up the seas and the oceans and all type of things dealing with the earth with water. And we're going we're gonna to look at, we're going we're gonna to check it out. Give me that second video. Play that from 310 to 415, roughly a minute and five seconds. Put the disclaimer up. Look. Look at all. What can you possibly do when God send the wrath of his destruction straight at you? We're going to see. Because they looking, the destruction coming. 
Look, they on the beach. Look what they doing. They running. Look, look at the boats and stuff down there. That's how some of y'all face going to be. Oh, no, don't run now. Nah. When you had mercy, when God gave you that extension of mercy and them extra days on earth, you rebelled against him? Nah, uh-uh. This your end right here. Yeah, just sit there and wait for it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait for it. God laughing. <laughs> And that water is real forceful. Look at they kissing their kids. Yeah, it's over with. Don't look at Harold. Don't look at Harold now. Look at it. Turn, take it down. Build it. So just imagine that. Look at them. They trying to run in the building upstairs. Yeah, just sit there and wait on it. So that's the spirit that God sent out right there. God sent that spirit out, and that spirit rejoiced. There's a spirit in that water right there. Look at him. He's just sitting there waiting on his back to get blowed out by the water. Yeah, it's over with. That's the, that's the type of God that you enemy. All right, that's enough on that. They get the message. You get the message. Yeah, you. Do you get the message? Because if you don't, that's going to be the message that you're going to get, including myself. We all have to give an account of what we did on this earth and whether it was according to the Bible. This ain't just for you that's listening. This is for everybody that this word is coming out and that's reaching. All right. So from there, go to Sirach 39 verse 22, and we're going to read 22 23 and 24. It's a rock. Ecclesiastes 39, 22 through 24. Yes, sir. So, hey, we bring, and I'm bringing this out for a reason, Israel. I'm bringing this out for a reason because the scripture says some may be saved by fear. Yes, I am reintroducing the fear of God to you from his wrath. And not just to put fear on you, also to have it in your conscience. We'll get on, we'll get on, we'll, we'll further elaborate on it as the class go on. Go on, read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 22. Uh-huh. His blessing covered the dry land as a river. Uh-huh. And watered it as a flood. Read. As he had turned the waters into saltness. Uh-huh. So shall the heathen inherit his wrath. Now that heathen, that's, that's the heathen, the original heathen, and also all people that have turned to the heathen ways and customs and have became heathen in their ways and their mind and their understanding. Yeah, that it go, it's going into both heathens, the heathen of all nations and the original heathen. God said it's meant for them to inherit wrath. Read on. As he turned the waters into saltness, uh -huh. so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. It says, so shall, shall, meaning it's going to happen. It shall come to pass. Read. As his ways are played unto the holy. Uh -huh. It says, guess what? To us that know the laws and that keep the laws, it's plain to us. We understand. Look, we ain't trying to deal with God on that level. We fear God most importantly. So we do what he said do. Read. As his ways are played unto the holy, uh -huh. so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. It says they are stumbling blocks to the wicked, to the heathen. And he created them to be a stumbling block to them, for them to rebel against it, for them, for their soul to be created to go in opposition of his word. He created them that way. So all praises, you got the wisdom and understanding to know all right, his ways are plain. It says, thus says the Lord, hey, I'm going to do it. I ain't going to create, it ain't going to be no stumbling block for me. I'm going to jump over it or I'm going to go around it. I'm going to do whatever I got to do and the power that's vested in me to keep the laws of the most high God. All right, so from there, go to 2 Thessalonians. And we're going to read 2 Thessalonians, the 7th through the 12th verse. 7 through 12, 2 Thessalonians. 
Yeah. Second Thessalonians 2 and 7. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let. That's the most I read. Until he be taken out of the way. Uh-huh. And then shall that wicked be revealed. It says, then shall the wicked re be revealed. So we got to figure out who is the wicked. Read on. Who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. It says, this wicked spirit that God created on the earth, guess what? God said, I'm going to consume him with just the spirit of my mouth. That's very powerful. God ain't got to swing no hands. God ain't got to stump you out. God ain't got to do none of that. He ain't got to give you the people's elbow. No. The most High God said, hey, with my spirit of my mouth, I'm going to consume the wicked. Read on. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It says the brightness of God coming is just going to destroy you alone. That's the reason why his presence is very important when you're on his side, because his presence will destroy you if you're his enemy. All right, read on. Even him who's coming is after the work, working of Satan. So we know who coming is after the working of Satan. <laughs> hint, hint, Esau. All right, go ahead. With all power. It says time. with all power. Yes, God gave him power for a time to rule over us. Read. And signs. And signs. And lying wonders. And he don't do nothing but lie. Even in his wonders, he lie. Read on. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Read. And them that perish. For those that perish by God, Ralph, read. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Uh-huh. That they might be saved. They don't want to be saved. And God said, look, when you go into the city and they don't, Take heed to the word, shake off the dust of thy boot, and go to another place where they may be more recessive to the word. Now, I might have messed that word up, but hey, bear with me, Israel. I don't speak the Queen's English. But go ahead, read on. And for this cause, uh -huh. God shall send them strong delusion. It says God is going to send you strong. It's two things that you don't want. First and foremost, you don't want God around. But the plague of the mind and the plague of a woman, those things right there, Lord, help. You don't want that. When your mind just everywhere, because in the world, look, I'm going to tell you, let me give y'all a quick insight. Look, in the mind, I was wicked. Of course, a lot of us was wicked. I used to smoke that green stuff that we call herbs because it ain't meant to be smoked. But I used to smoke that, and I don't know somebody put some in my stuff because my mind wasn't right at all. So, yes, for all you smokers, there's some stuff in that stuff that you're smoking on that God is going to plague your mind, and you ain't going to know what day it is. You ain't going to know what time it is because in those two things, you don't know the time in a, in a day, you can't get prepared for the Most High to send his son back. So I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't right. If the book don't say do it, if the book say do it, do it. If it said don't do it, don't do it, Israel. God know better than us. He created us. He know what we need and what we don't need, what we need to refrain from and what we need to drive closer to, which is this Bible. All right, read on. Strong delusion, 2-11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion uh -huh. that they should believe a lie. God going to have you to believe a lie. No, no, he got my best interest. He wasn't lazy. He wouldn't lace my weed. He wouldn't lace it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. Read what you got. Verse 12. That they all might be damned. God said, look, I'm going to put you in a trick bag. You're going to be damned. Yes, that's a, a word in the Bible. You damned. You damn right God going to do it. Read what you got. Who believe not the truth. Because you don't believe in God's word. Read. But had pleasure. And unrighteous. And you had pleasure in committing adultery and committing fornication and committing covetousness and committing all of these sinful acts, stealing, lying, hating your brother, malice. You committed those unrighteous acts, so you have an unrighteous end. All right, so from there, so we still going into finding out. Who the wicked is. It says the wicked shall be revealed. Remember, the wicked is going to come with deceivableness 
He's going to come with unrighteousness. He's going to come with lies. He's going to come with pleasure of unrighteousness. He's going to have you to believe a lie. And the wicked is going to be the one that eventually gets you destroyed. All right, so read that in Malachi. Give me Malachi 1 and 1 and read from 1, verse 1 to verse 4. So we finna find out who the wickedness is. Read what you got. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Uh-huh. The burden of the word of the Lord mm -hmm. to Israel by Malachi. Read. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord. Yet I love Jacob. Uh-huh. And I hated Esau. Oh, so God do got a side to where he just don't love. He actually hate this person that we're reading about and the people that come from this person. Read what you got. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. It says, so listen, pay attention. It says, God giving us some contact clues. It says, I laid his mountains to waste and his heritage. Read verse 4. Whereas Edom say it. Edom say this. Read. We are impoverished. So Edom said we are impoverished. We lack sources of income. We lack raw minimal uh, minerals. We lack all the wealth of the earth. They are impoverished. They are poor. This was doing, um, at one point, this was during the Dark Ages when we had um, um, Europe was, was ruled by black queens and kings for guess how many years? For roughly about 700 years or more. Well, we had black emperors, black kings, black queens that was ruling all over there in Portugal and Spain. Yes, we rule. That's the reason why they named it the Dark Ages, because it was a very dark time for Esau and his nation. All right, read on. Whereas Edom saith, uh -huh. we are impoverished, read. but we will return. It built the desolate place. So they, hey, they did return during the 14th through the 17th century, the rebirth period by the Medici family because they was bankers. So they formed the lines and started this banking and, and accumulated all this money and started rebuilding the nation of Edom. That's the Renaissance period. All right, read on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. They shall build. God said, look, they shall build. And guess what? They did build to the point where they still in rulership to this day. We're going to read on to further prove that Esau, the so-called white man, is the wicked. Read what you got. But I will throw down. God said he going to throw down. Yes. Let's let you know God is a black man. Yes, he going to throw down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like we said he was going to throw down. Yeah, 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 yeah. He going to throw down. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. That's our God. We his people, and we going to rule forever when he send Christ back. Bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiritual bars. Read what you got. And they shall call them the border of wicked. Uh-huh. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. For how long? Forever. God said, look, I hate this nation that I created on the face of the earth forever. But just know, God didn't create them for nothing. We're going to read why they was created by God. All right. So for the new listeners, you might, might ask, hey, who is Edom? I don't know the history. I don't know who Esau is. We're going to help the new listeners out. Give me Genesis 36 verse 1 real quick. We're going to help you out because that may be your question. Who is Edom? may be the question right now that's going through your mind. All right, read what you got. Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Uh-huh. Now these are the generations of Esau. Uh-huh. Who is Edom? Who is what? Who is Edom? So now we know Esau is Edom. Those are the, he is the progenitor of the Edomites. All right, from there, give me 25. Genesis 25, 24 through 26. We're going we gonna, to we gonna link um, some images to Esau to give you a more clear understanding of who are we talking about today in the earth. Who is this man? Read what you got. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. Uh-huh. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So the first attribute of Esau is he's red. No, nah, no, nah, nah, the other one. The other one. But read on. 
And the first came out red. Uh -huh. All over like in Harry Garment. It says he was red in color and he was all over covered with hair. Like a hairy garment, read. And they called his name Esau. Read on. And after that came his brother out. So his brother came out after him, read. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Uh-huh. And his name was called Jacob. That hand taken on his heel, you can read about that in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, where the kingdom of Esau is going to fall and the kingdom of Jacob is going to rise and be in power forever. Read on. And his name was called Jacob. Uh huh. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So notice they didn't bring up how Jacob looked because Jacob looked like everybody else, but Esau stood off. Let's get that. It says he was red all over like a hairy garment. Now, in the South, we from the South because the South got something to say. But look. This is the red man. It says he was he the first came out red. Why? Because the pigmentation of their skin, their blood show through. Yes, we call them down here the rednecks. And there's a clear indication that God is talking about indeed the so-called white man, not the Arab. And for, for y'all that believe that Esau is the Arab, we got some for that too. It is what it is. We're gonna kill it all. All right, go from there, go to the next. The next pitch. You know they like they meet raw. Esau. Look at that. Bars. <laughs> I'll mow y'all today. Hey. I get the other picture. Look at that. Beware of rednecks. They know they the rednecks. They know they red. They know they ain't white. Yes, it says be hey, and beware of them. Tell you, we're going to read about why you should beware of them. It says dance or die. Notice everything dealing with Esau got something to do with death, man. This nation, that nation is nothing but a virus, man. They, hey, they a virus, bro. Hey, so we got to keep God lost. All right, get that black couple. Get the black couple that had the, um, that had the black child and the white child to show you that this is, and this is possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the black couple. That's the um son on the right that the dad is holding. He looked like Jacob because his 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 um his color or nothing wasn't he wasn't explained in the scriptures because he looked like the mama and the dad and the rest of everybody. But then when Esau came and hit the scene, guess what? Now if that baby go to crying, that baby would be the same color as that red sweater he got on and them shoes. He'll be the same exact color. Cause you get the, the blood when they get when they get angry, when they when they when they get infuriated, when they get upset, when they cry, they blood show forth. Or when they get a suntan, they get sunburned. Yes, you gonna show it's gonna their skin is gonna show forth that red color, that red blood that's in them. All right, so we're gonna go from there. Go to Job nine twenty four real quick. Because we're still revealing the wicked. If you still don't know, we're going to give you a little bit more contact clues. Get that Job 9, verse 24. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Uh huh. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. It says, The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Read. He covereth the faces. Of the judges thereof. Now, when you read the Bible, it has a book. The seventh book, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, the seventh book of the Bible is called Judges. And when you read the book of Judges, it don't show nobody but people that look like us. But today, we don't know that we the judges of the Most High God and his word in his earth. So guess why? Because Esau has covered everybody that has any type of dealing with the Bible. They painted their images white. You can read about that in First Maccabees three forty eight. You can read about that when they cover the faces. They covered our faces. They paint the pictures of our. Uh, they paint the likeness of our pictures in their pigmentation of skin, meaning a lighter hue of the skin. All right. So it says they cover the faces of, of the judges. Read. If not, where and who is he? It says, if who else can be this man? Who else? He run the earth right now. He got the powerful military. He got a military embassy in every land. 
Why ain't no military embassy of the Arabs over here in America? You know why? Because it's going to start a war. It's going to be World War III, and it's going to start regardless because it's prophesied in the Bible that God going to set nation against nation, kingdoms against kingdom. We're going to read about it. We're going to read about it. All right, so from there, get me Revelation 13 and 9 because some people might say, well, no, you wrong. The Arab is Esau. He's the First off, the, the, the Arab ain't read. They ain't ruling the earth. So, hey, look, this, you can't neg negate this scripture that we about to bring out. So let's just entertain ignorance for just a split moment. And we're going to see if this could possibly be true with the Arabs being the so-called white man, Esau. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Well, see if the Arab can be Esau and not the so-called white man being Esau. Because the scripture said, if not, then who? Who is he? We got to find who he is. We know who he is. We just trying to help the new listeners. Read what you got. He, if any man hath an ear, let him hear. So guess what? You listen, it's 807. Central Standard Time, right? It's Central Standard Time? Yeah, yeah, it's 807 Central Standard Time. And you listening. And it says, if you got an ear, you must hear what we about to let you hear. Read what you got. He that leadeth into captivity uh -huh. shall go into captivity. One he that can't. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We was taken into captivity by the so-called white man and the Arab man. The sub-Sahara slave trade and... The transatlantic slave trade. You read about it. Read about it in Joel. It tells you in Amos. It lets you know that what nations took had hand in us being enslaved. Yes, the, the, the real Africans, the Nilotan Africans, they was the one that had hand and the Arabs and Esau. The Grecians. Read what you got. He that leadeth into captivity uh -huh. shall go into captivity. Then they lead us into captivity. But guess what? God said they shall indeed, without a questionable doubt, go into captivity. Read on. He that killeth with the sword. Then they kill us with the sword, rape, rob, and, and, and pillage this entire land from our native brothers. Didn't they do that? Starve them out by killing all the buffaloes? Didn't they do that? Give them blankets with smallpox to kill them out and didn't give them no medicine remedies? Didn't they do that? Because if they didn't, then who did? You know who did it. Read on. Must be killed with the sword. You must be killed with the sword. Isaiah 14, 29 said, prepare slaughter, not just for them, but for their children. Because they didn't have no sympathy on the old or the young when they was destroying all nation of people. Read on. Here is the patience in the face of the saints. And we patiently wait on this to come into fruition, to be fulfilled. Yes, the saints are indeed Israel. Psalms 50 and 5. Read about it. No, no, no. I'm just referencing because, hey, I got, I got a lot. I, ain't, I don't even think I'm going to get through. But from there, go to Sirach 39.25 real quick. We're going to jump over to Sirach 39, verse 25. So, yes, you Israelites that's keeping God, law, statutes, and commandments, look, endure to the end. Endeavor to keep the unity. Come together. Stay together. And guess what? Your end is going to be prosperous because what happened to us is going to be happening to them. Yes, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. What goes around comes around. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even believe in this book if it wasn't penalties for them. That's a just God. God said he like just balances. And I like the same. Where judgment, where just judgment is, hey, I'm loving it. Read what you got. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 25. Uh-huh. For the good. Are good things created from the beginning? So we're going to figure out what these good things that was created from the beginning. Read on. 
So evil things for sinners. It says he created evil things for sinners, though, and good things for those from the beginning. So this thing was set up from the beginning of time. Those that create evil in the earth, those sinners, God going to appoint them evil. Those that create good, God is going to give them good things. It was already happening. It was already done and said in the beginning. All right, from there, go to the beginning, Genesis 1, 25 through 27 real quick. Let's get some of these good things that was created for the good. Which is ultimately the kingdom. Genesis chapter 1 verse 25. Read what you got. And God made the beasts of the earth uh -huh. after his kind. So these animals he made, read. And cattle uh -huh. after their kind. Read. And everything that creepeth upon the earth uh -huh. after his kind. Read. And God saw. That it was good. So God created these things, and it was good for the purpose of God creating it. You can't eat everything that God created. He ain't saying that it's good. He's saying that it's good because he created certain things for a purpose, like a buzzer. It cre it, he created that to clean the waste of animals. Not for you to eat, but read on. And everything that creepeth upon the earth uh -huh. after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Read and on. God said, let us make man in our image. So God created man. Read. He made everything. Then he created man. Read. After our likeness. Uh-huh. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. It says let them have dominion over the fish in the sea. Read. And over the fowl of the air, uh -huh. and over the cattle, mm -hmm. and over all the earth, mm -hmm. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So there was the good that was created for us from the beginning, meaning rulership. We ain't got to go to the other nations for the want of all things. We can depend on God, and he will provide all of our needs. But we stop depending on God, start depending on the enemy, and now look where we at. Look at the position that we're in. We are so far-fetched from what we was designed to be doing, meaning ruling. When are you going to wake up and be ready to rule? And when are y'all sisters going to wake up and get tired of being in the condition you're in and get back to helping us being in rulership so you, your feet, yeah, they won't touch the ground. You ain't working? Work who who working? No. It ain't no work. Ain't no alarm clock to be set for you to get up and work. It's gonna be like a bad dream. We just said, what? We was in slavery. Man, get out of here, man. What, what, what? You, hey, did you hear what he said? We was enslaved to these people? Man, never. That's unheard of. All right, so go from there to um uh, Sirach 39, 26. So these are the things. We had dominion over the whole earth, and we lost it, man. Man, we lost it. And I show, you know what? I, I be saying that. I don't hate it. I love the fact that God create ways to draw us closer back to him, much rather than keeping us confused and letting us down and not getting that promise that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we may live forever. After this, is over with. This is the last captivity. There ain't nothing else after this. So we might as well get it right, especially y'all older generation. The one that's, that's you in your 60s, you 50, 60, 70. Guess what? Your life expectancy ain't no more than about 70 years. God know it and Esau know it. That's why your, your, um, your retirement check, it, it don't hit until you about that age. Now, 65 to 70, that's when they say, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll give him a little bit of money. We know he ain't going to stay on earth for another about five years. Especially if it's health bad, it, we'll give them another year. Because we eat all abominable, all abominable creatures that God created not to be eaten. All right, read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 26. This we still going into the good things that was created for man from the beginning and the evil for the sinner. Read. The principal thing uh -huh. for the whole use of man's life mm -hmm. are water. Mm-hmm. Fire, mm -hmm. iron, mm -hmm. and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothes. It says all these things are the principal things and necessity that man need on earth. So you would think, hey, water, yeah, we drink water, it hydrates our body. 
um, water that's in the fruits, the the um, H two threes, the the cucumbers, the millions, all the million families. That's the water. Hey, we got the fire. It, it heat us up. It help us cook the iron. We use the iron. We use salt for the flavoring, for the salt covering that God gave us. The flour. You know we love flour. We gotta cook that chicken, Israel. Hey, we gotta cook that fried chicken. We use the honey. We use milk for cereal, the wheat. We use the blood of grapes. Now, all, we use all these things, all of these are chief things, all of these are principal things of life. Read on. All these things are for good to the godly. It says good to the godly. So we read earlier, it's good to the, the um, for the good things are created from the beginning and evil for the sinners. Read on. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. So these same things, fire, iron, salt, flour, wheat, honey, blood, or grapes, clothing, these things are created for the evil. And we're going to read how they created for the evil. Go to verse 28. Verse 28. Uh-huh. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. It says God now creates spirits for vengeance. Read. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. Uh-huh. In the time of destruction. In the time of what? Of destruction. It says these spirits that God created for vengeance, they are created for a time for destruction. Read. They pour out their force. Uh-huh. And appease the wrath of him. That made them. It says they appeased the wrath of him that made them. That's God. God's wrath. When God turn his back and show his wrath, you better be in good riddance. Meaning you better, you better make sure you keep in the law, statutes, and commandments. Read verse 29 real quick. Fire. The first thing he said, fire. Read. Hell. Uh-huh. And famine. Uh-huh. And death. Uh-huh. All these were created for vengeance. Give me that video, the fire video. Start with 50 seconds and go to a minute and 45 with the disclaimer. We're going to read about fire. Such a massive inferno. It says this is a massive inferno. The helicopter can't, they have a certain proximity to fly it because it's so hot. With that flames heat that's coming from the flame, the they can't fly close to them flames. Can run and reach 200 feet into the air. It says 200 feet in the air. Who jumping that high? Look at that. That's a spirit right there that God created for vengeance. This is about as close as a helicopter can get. You hear him, don't it? Helicopter can't get no close. The fires of 2011 destroyed one and a half million acres of pine forest. It says one and a half million of acres of fire destroyed in fire 2011. Is beneficial in the long run. The forest will recover, even from a blaze this massive. All right, that's it on there. So yeah, the 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 forest. Yes, it, when, once that fire. Um, pass, pass over, whatever the case may be. Stuff eventually start growing back. But what's going to happen to your flesh when you consume any fire that the Lord going to send? You ain't going to come back. No, you're going to die to death. You're going to give up the ghost. All right, so it says fire. Get that hail video. Hail storm. Now watch how big these hail balls are. Imagine getting hit by one of these in the top of your cranium. Tiny water droplet journeys up above the freezing level in some of the most beautiful and dramatic thunderstorms. But how does it get so big? And how big can it get? Look at that. They're everywhere. In an environment conducive of a severe hailstorm, this rising air or updraft is often exploding into lowered freezing levels. This is the factory where hail is made. When the droplet freezes, this process releases heat, which keeps the stone's exterior in a sticky liquid phase. As the little stone journeys through the cloud, it captures more and more water on the surface. The inner layer freezes, and the hailstone grows a layer. 
Look at that. You can see the different onion now, that's the size of a quarter, which is still big when it's coming from. Now, look at that. Look at that hailstorm ball right there. One come on, who's trying to get hit by pieces of ice like that, shape. man? Here's in the top of your head. With crystal star -like then it got, it got point. Look at that. Like come on, man. This is the type of guy you want to. You want to play around with this type of guy? And this, and this right here there, is the coming from the sky some at speeds of 100 miles, miles per hour, hour. hitting you? <laughs> man, look, bro. Hey, y'all better stop playing with the God of this Bible, man. The God ain't to be played with. Hey, get the next video because it says fire, hell, and famine. Fire, hell, and famine. Get that famine um, video. Because we've been telling y'all for, for a while now, stock up Israel, a famine is coming. A planned famine by God's enemy. But God is doing it to draw us closer to him. We got to be closer than never before because these pestilence and, and plagues and, and the stuff that God is sending on this earth, man, we got to get right with each other and most important with the Lord. Read, uh, get that with you guys. That read. Give me, um, I think it started, yeah, started at 140. Lactose intolerance. Look Abdul at those malnutrition babies. Normal milk. Before the they deprived the, the food. Needs was widely available. And I'm going to tell you something. They but look like they're young, but they old, they're a lot older. But by them being it's malnutrition, you would think that they're a lot younger than they is. This war has 600 and this ain't no laughing matter, Israel. And lack of but that's how the Lord is coming. This central hospital to the brink. You see the baby skeleton system. Children are the most affected by malnutrition. Here, hunger has left one and a half million children starving. This is four-year-old. Look child. at all the flies on the baby, man. Golly. His grandfather brought him here with fever and diarrhea. Malnutrition has meant his immune system isn't able to fight a simple infection. And severe shortage of medicine means the antibiotic he needs isn't available either. And that show you, man, Esau don't care, man. They go over there with the BBC News and go over there. That's enough. They go over there with the dang on news um, showing this stuff. But meanwhile, they ain't trying to come up with no plan, no strategies. But it's designed. God got to sit up that way. All right, so all these things were created for death, the vengeance of God. You seeing the vengeance of God. Give me that in Sirach 39, verse 30 and 31. We seeing the vengeance of God. Let me look at the time. Oh, Lord. Jesus help and wept. All right, but read, read that. Sirach chapter 39, verse 30. Uh-huh. Teeth of wild beasts. Uh-huh. And scorpions. Read. Serpents. Uh-huh. And the sword. Uh-huh. Punishing the wicked to destruction. It says all these things basically was for the wicked to be destroyed. Read on. They shall rejoice in his command. God said these things, when I put the spirit on them, they going to rejoice when God give them those commandments and do what? And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. It says when need is, they're going to be ready. They ain't going to go against God's word. Read. And when their time is come. When their time come. They shall not transgress his word. They ain't going to transgress God's word like man do. We transgress God's word because God give us mercy. But when God put his spirit on these animals and these wild beasts to carry out destruction, they ain't going to transgress God's word. That's the reason why Esau be playing with these lions on, 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 um, in the circus, jumping through hula hoops, and then these dang on lions, hey, God put the spirit on them, they start to attack them, killing them. So, yeah, let's read about it because it's in the scripture on how God set wild beasts against our people. Get that in 2 Kings 2, verse 19 through 24. We're going to read real quick. Read this fast. I ain't going to stop you on this. I'm going to have to let you go ahead and go through it until you get to verse 24. 2 Kings 2, verse 19 through 24. We're going into the wild beasts. Why God created these wild beasts to carry out his plan of destruction. Read what you got. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19. Uh -huh. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord see it. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the water, 
and cast the salt in there and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from this any more death or barren land. So it said it ain't going to be no death because guess what? We, we talking about famine, but the land was barren, meaning it wasn't, pre, it wasn't producing no type of fruits. It wasn't producing food for the people. Read what you got, but God sent his prophet Elisha. Read. So the waters were healed unto this day, mm -hmm. according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city mm -hmm. and mocked him and said unto him. So listen, it says these little children came out of the city and mocked him. Let's let you know, God, look, he's no respected person. He killed kids. That's why the stuff that we looking about, them, them malnutrition kids, God know the soul before he put it in the womb. So he know, hey, I got to go ahead on and kill this child right here before he come on the earth because this child is going to be destroying a lot of things that I created to be to stay here. So God, no. But we look at it, like, oh, man, that baby. No, God looking like, nah, uh-uh. I know who that is. And he ain't going to get away when he come in this earth. But that's another topic for another time. Read what you got. Go up, thou bald head. So these little kids say, hey, go up, bald head. Hey, bro, your head bald. Go up, bald head. Read what you got. Go up, thou bald head. Uh-huh. And he turned back and looked on them. Uh -huh. And curse them hey, in the name of the Lord. Some of these little kids, you got to curse them in the name of the Lord. So that lets you know that cursing, we finna go into what cursing really is. It ain't the, the MF, -er, it ain't the, 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 the BIT, it ain't the ASS, it ain't that though these words that we have been taught in this captivity. This is the true cursing. Read what you got. And there came forth two she bears out two of what? the wood. Two she bears. So God put the spirit on two she bears. They came out of the wood and did what? It tear 42 children of them. It says it killed, tore up, bit, scratched 42 of those children. Give me that breakdown, that 5,044 documented attacks from 1950 to 19, I mean from 2019. These 12 different species. What we got? Well, they jamming back then. That's that old school. More bounce. God going to give a lot of y'all some more bounce. You're going to bounce right on off the earth. What we got? What we got? What we got? Nah, that ain't the one. That ain't what I'm looking for. We passed that that raffle act that God committed and still commits to this day. And that's the thing about these acts that God committed. They ain't done. People still get, it's still tsunamis. People still get drowned by water. People still get attacked by these animals. The Lord is still in the earth destroying our people for disobedience and the heathen that goes in opposition. All right, so this is a breakdown um, of 12 different species. So we got, all right, it says, which largest animals are involved in the deadliest human attacks where um, where do frequent attacks happen? So I know I already looked into this. Most people get attacked by bears because people like to hike and to do all this crazy stuff and go up into the mountains. Go down to the list real quick. All right, right there. So look, number one is the sloth bears, 1,337. And then you got the tiger with 1,000, um, the Atlantic bear. I mean, the, the Asiatic black bear, 765 attacks. You got the brown bear, 664. You got the wolves, 414. The American black bears, 403. You got the lions, 282. You got the leopard, 205. Coyotes, 140. The cougars, um, 135. The jaguars, 25. And then you got the polar bears. 25. Now, you know, there ain't nobody but Esau out there with the polar bears and that cold. You know, we don't do that cold like that. But these are the bears. Now, give me that video, the bear attack. With old DiCaprio or whatever his name is. This is spirit that God put on them she bears that killed them 40 kids. No, 42. My bad. I stand correct.
Start at like 50 seconds. Let me see. See what 50 seconds look like. Yeah, it started right up in there. So he walking through a wooded area by itself, which I don't know why, but, you know, it is what it is. Got his weapon in his hand. He's ready. Ready for whatever. Let's see how ready he is. See that bear right there. And I'm going to tell you, the she bear is vicious more than any bear because they protecting their cubs. They cub somewhere around, so they on go. So he don't know that the mama right behind him. Uh-huh. So just, just think, man, if this you in this situation and God put the spirit on this bear to come at you like that. Now, them bears, they run up to about 40 miles per hour. And they they wait anywhere from, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, but I don't know. I mean, about three, 400, 500 pounds. Look at that. Look at how that bear is shaking them like a pit bull, man. Just imagine if you in that situation right there, man. Ain't nobody but the Lord going to be able to get you out of there. Then he got his, man, the bear got his palm on his dang old head, man. Imagine three, four hundred pounds on your head sniffing you. Man, I'm talking about the bowels just loose right now. I'm talking about this defecation city going on right now, man. That's the proper word, defecation. I kill that, man. Just imagine if that was you. That ain't nobody but God going to be able to get you out of that situation, man. Y'all better stop playing. Hey, give me the scorpion bite. The scorpion bites in um a year. Pull that up. Hey, you have Sirach 39, 32. Um, we're going to read 32 and 33. Have that on standby. Then we're going to go from there to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. I right, pull that chart up. Now you gotta go back up. It's like um an estimate stings. Uh oh, hold on, you can start right there. Alright, this says right there where it says of about three thousand snake species worldwide. Kind of light it up for them so they know what I'm reading it. Yeah, right there. It says of about 3,000 snake species throughout the world, only about 15% worldwide, 20% um, dangerous human, um, venomous, toxin. Uh, yeah, that word. But uh, it's going to go down. It, go, it goes into the rattlesnakes, copperhead, cottonmouth. So it goes into, it says more than 60,000. Now, this is going into the serpent. I need the scorpions, where it says an estimate annual number of scorpion stings. That's next, though. Keep that that coming next. So keep that on standby. But it's going into the scorpion stings. It's going into like 1.2 million um, stings a year, uh, which go into like 3,000 some death, like a certain. You don't think it's, I sent it? All right, so I, I, I'll just um, give the estimate in regards to the scorpion stings. So it's an estimate annual 1.2 million um, scorpion stings, which, which leads to roughly about 3,250 deaths a year. That's a, a, a percentage of like 27%. Um, so <clears throat> every person basically get killed of venomous snakes, scorpions, um from the and I think that's that's the that's a reference off of you can just Google it from 2015. 
No, no, no. October 2015, 2021. Um, so look it up. The scorpion stings per year. Now go back to the serpent real quick. <clears throat> so remember it said teeth of wild beasts, scorpion, serpents, and sword punishing the wicked to destruction. That's the rock 3930. So that's what we're going over. We're going over each step. We went over the teeth of beasts, just the bears, and then we went over and the lions and all that stuff. We went over the scorpions. Um, now we're going into the serpent, and then next we're going to go into the sword. All right, so, yeah, it says over 3,000 snakes be seized throughout the world. Um, only 15% worldwide and 20% in the U.S. is dangerous to the human. They got venomous. So these are the venomous snakes, the rattlesnakes. Um, they got the rattle in their tails, the copperheads, and the cottonmouths, the water moccasins. Um, a lot of these snakes are um, all around us. So all praise to the Lord. Ain't, you ain't have a snake encounter. Look, all praise to the Lord. Man. I, I remember when I was in college, man, it was a snake. I don't even know what kind. It was a snake um, in an apartment complex. And me, I'm, I'm just crazy. I see the snake, and I just, my adrenaline just get to rushing. I'm I'm all on back of folks' truck trying to find something, man. I find a shovel, man. I'm just running out to the snake, hitting the snake. Even when I was young, I stayed in the country, man. I'm jumping ditches to go catch and kill snakes. I don't know what was wrong with me. All praise for these laws, man. I wouldn't dare do such a thing. Now, all praise the Lord had mercy on me. Same mercy that we granted now that we got to get it right, Israel. All right, it says, um... More than 60,000 bites and stings are reported to the poison center and results in about 100 deaths each year in the U.S. But still, hey, these are people that's basically dying because of God's spirit is on these animals for his vengeance. It says about 45,000 um, are snake bites, of which 7,000 to 8,000 are venomous and cause about five deaths. Rattlesnakes account um, for a major snake bites. And almost all deaf. Copperheads, it's less in intent. Um, cotton mouths accounts more other venomous bites. All right, so yeah, you get the gist, Israel. It says more patients are males between 17 and 27 years old. It's 50% of them are intoxicated and deliberately handled or molested the snake. Mm, you know who that is molesting snakes. We ain't even got to say nothing, man. That vile person of the earth, man. It says, it like, the, 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 uh, what God call him? What kind of fornicator he call him? A profane fornicator. This man molesting the snake. Boy, I tell you. All right, that's enough of that, man. Let's get on to the sword. Pull up that, um, the stabbing, the 2019 estimates of the stabbing in the top 10 countries. Got the most stabbings. Right there. Make it big right there. So these are the top 10 countries that have the most stabbings of death. You got Brazil with 9,000. You got South Africa with 9,000. India with, with 8,000. Russia with 6,000. The Philippines, they got 5,000. Um, you got Nigeria, 5,000. Mexico, 4,000. China, 4,000. Um, Pakistan, 3,000. And Colombia, 3,000. All of these numbers are stabbing deaths so god created the sword for what so he could put the spirit on man to carry out his bidding and killing you got that for me in sirach read that in sirach 39 32 and 33 sirach chapter 39 verse 32 uh-huh therefore from the beginning i was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing god said he left this in writing read all the works of the lord are good. Uh huh. It yeah. says all these works that God created, they are good. God created these things good. Read. And He will give every needful thing in due season. He said He gonna give every needful thing in what season? In due season. So God gave He gave these works, and He gave them for to be good and it's needful in due season. So. In due season, these things are going to come about and it's going to take place because God's word has already sealed, signed, and delivered it. But because 
Sin is, is not brought against man for his evil work. Therefore, he's set in his ways. He continues to do sin. You read about that in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. But we finna go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. And you got to think, you sin a hundred times. You've been sinning since you on the earth. You 70 and 80. Look, you ain't got nothing but a good hot five more years. You better go ahead on and turn your life over to the Lord and your personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Because that's your best bet. That's the best advice that you can take. Hey, I'm telling you now. Y'all don't know nothing about the Marty train down there in New York. Hey, but get that Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Uh-huh. To everything there is a season. Read. And, every, and a time to every purpose so, under heaven. So when you read on in, in verse 2, 3, 4, 5, it says a time to hate, time to kill, time to restore, time to heal. It's a time and a purpose for everything. And it's going to be a time where God sent these things against our people to destroy them if they don't come out of the midst of their sin. Give me that in Psalm 17, verse 13 real quick. Because remember, I said earlier, God created Esau for a specific reason. This is the reason why God created Esau. We know why he created the animals for his vengeance and put the spirit on him. Now we're going to see why he created Esau and what he used Esau in the earth today for. Read that in Psalm 17 and verse 13. Yep, Psalm 17, verse 13. Psalm chapter 17, verse 13. Uh-huh. Arise, O Lord. Uh-huh. Disappoint him. Uh -huh. Disappoint him, read. Cast him down. Uh-huh. Deliver my soul from the wicked. It says, deliver thy soul from the wicked. Read. Now, we read earlier who the wicked was. Esau, Edom, the Edomites, the progenitor of the Edomites. Read on. Which is thy sword? What did he say the wicked is? Which is thy sword? Why was the wicked created? For God's sword to bring judgment on the earth when we go in opposition of God. Because God ain't going to jump down here and he ain't going to he ain't going to fight us himself. No, God said, man, I just put the spirit on this nation to go over there, get them from the west coast of Africa, bring them over here on slave ships and build up America off the slave work in the bloodshed of Israel because of their disobedience. And now. Guess what? We're still on the bottom of society. We have created everything there is to be created to make work easier for us and work still is hard for us. What's the problem? What are we doing wrong? We tried church. We tried marching. We tried coming together to, with these people. And we found out that we have been led in a burning building. Martin Luther King tried to warn us, but we ain't want to believe it. Some of y'all still believe in a dream. Well, keep on dreaming because that dream has become a nightmare. All right, so from now, we're going to go to Genesis. Give me Genesis real quick. Genesis 27, 37 through 41. We're going to speed read. Read. Give me your fast and read, your fast and read. I wish I had two readers. Hint, hint, he ain't here. He ain't here. Read what you got. 27, 37. Genesis chapter 27, verse 37. Uh-huh. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, uh -huh. and all his brethren have I given to him for service. So this was uh, this was all blessing right here, Jacob. That Isaac blessed Jacob. He gave all of the rest of them a servants to us. Read. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And he gave us corn and wine to sustain us. Read. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? So he said, Esau, what I got to do for you? What I got to do for you, Esau? Because I didn't gave him the blessing already. Read. It was designed by the Lord for the one that said, oh, he tricked him. Esau went doing them but lying with tears and with words. Read what you got. And Esau said unto his father, Uh-huh. Hast thou but one blessing, my said, father? Hey, look, look, you got one blessing. Read. Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. Mm -hmm. And Esau lift up his voice and wept. You know they put on them tears real quick. <laughs> he attacked me. Who was it? Oh, that black guy. What black guy? Him. Come on now. Stop it. They come out lying. Read on. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Now, now listen to what Isaac blessed Esau with. Read what you got. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. It says thy dwelling, your dwelling places shall be the fatness of the earth. Read. And of the dew of heaven from above. It says in the dew of heaven from above, meaning 
he blessed Esau to be in rulership for an extended period of time. And let's see how he was going to get into rulership. Read what you got. And by thy sword shalt thou live. How? And sh by thy sword shalt thou live. God said, look, Isaac, this is the blessing that you're going to give Esau. He is going to have the fatness of the earth, and he's going to get it by the sword, meaning bloodshed. So for you ones that's wanna, that want to say, oh, we should, we should pick up arms and go against them. We should, we, we, we should the, um, the, 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 the NIF, what, what the name of them people? The Not Fucking Around Coalition. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened to them? They shooting themselves in the leg and everything. What happened to that mission? It's been aborted because God wasn't a part of that mission. This is the mission that God is a part of. Excuse my French. That's the name of them. That's just their name. I mean, they came up with it. I'm just rephrasing what was said and what they created. All right, but read on. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Uh-huh. It shall serve thy brother. It says you're supposed to serve your brother, Read. It shall serve thy brother. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass where thou shalt have the dominion. So just like I said, they have dominion. This is their blessing to have dominion, to rule. You can't out, you can't uproot what God created to happen. You can't go against God's sword. What is wrong with you? You crazy. You wanna fight? No, we ain't finna fight. We're going to keep these laws and statutes and commandments, and we're going to let Christ come down here. And when he put his spirit on us, then the fight is on. Read what you got. Thou, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now, who else had yokes on our necks? Look it up. Put yokes of iron in Google and search it and see what people come up. No other than you so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. This lets you know who it's talking about. Read what you got. And Esau hated Jacob. Still to this day. Because to this of the day, blessing. To this day, they still hate us. Read what you got. Wherewith his father blessed him. Because they hate us because God blessed us with the blessing to be rulers. Read what you got. And Esau said in his heart, uh -huh. the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Uh -huh. Then will I slay my brother. So Jacob. he got on his mind killing because eventually he broke the brotherly covenant. He broke the brother in the covenant. So when you read Deuteronomy 23 and 7 where it says, Abhor not the Edomite or the Egyptian, they went in opposition of what God set up. So now that's null and void. It's over with for them. God is coming back to reap vengeance on them. And he's going to let us do it too. We're going to get a little ha, ha, ha. We're going to get a little ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we're going to be in there. It's going to be a battle when God come back. And put his spirit on us. All right, so get that. The brother of the covenant being broken in Amos 1 verse 9 and read verse 9 through 11 real quick. I got about 10 more minutes. I ain't going to make it, Israel. I ain't going to make it. I ain't going to say I'm going to do a part two because I just don't know. I might. You know what? I might do a part two. You know what? I'm going to do a part two. I'm going to do a part two. Yeah, I'm going to do a part two. All praise to the Lord. All right, read what you got. Amos chapter 1, verse 9. Uh-huh. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, mm -hmm. I would not turn away the punishment thereof. God said, I ain't going to turn away the punishment of these nations that came against my heritage. That's why we got to be real cautious of how we deal with each other. Because we are all God heritage. And it, 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 it I said, I was about to say it behoove you. I ain't going to say that no more because I was wrong the first time. So I ain't going to. Making that enough. But what I will say is Solomon, King Solomon, before he came into a kingship, before he came into rulership, he prayed in first Kings three, starting with verse nine, that God gave him the spirit of discernment to judge righteous judgment amongst Israel. And God gave him everything because he had a love and a desire for his people. But he went off and he came back. He told us the whole duty of man. Hey, I tried. He tried all of the sins that known to man. And he said, look, the whole conclusion, fear God, keep the commandments. So he repented. He told us the end goal. He gave us the 411. He kept it real with us. All right, so read on. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Uh-huh. Because they lit because they delivered up. The whole captivity to Edom. Uh -huh. And remember not the brotherly, the brotherly covenant. Read. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, mm -hmm. which shall devour 
the places thereof. Read. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and kept his wrath forever. It says his anger tore perpetually, meaning forever. God hate him forever, and he hate us forever. Forever, forever, ever. It ain't no end to his hatred. That's the reason why God made prophecies that he was going to come back and destroy. This is the only person that can save us from this captivity. This man got a stronghold spiritually on us, physically on us. And God said he want us to depend on him. Because if he put the spirit on us to overcome this man now, then we're going to do God a disservice and not give him the credit and the reverence that's due to him. Read on. But I will send a fire upon Teman, uh -huh. which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child. He said, li listen, what other man did this? They ripped up the child. Read it again. Because they have ripped up the women with child. It Gideon. says they ripped up the women with child they did it also when they cut the child out of all sisters bellies and they fed them to gators to lure the gator in that's where you get your alligator skins snakes snake skins all these different skins of boots well you how you think they caught these beasts with all babies they ripped them out of all sisters bellies and the lord said guess what i put that spirit on you to do that just so I can fulfill my prophecy in Isaiah 14 and verse 21. <laughs> I told you God got a sense of humor. He'll, be, he'll have you to be it and go a certain way. All so that he, it, so it could be a part of his design plan on earth. All right, read on. That they might enlarge their border. Mm -hmm. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah. Uh -huh. And it shall devour the palaces thereof uh -huh. with shouting in the day of battle, with the tempest in the day of the whirlwind. All right. So in the day of the whirlwind, remember, we showed y'all the whirlwind. All right. Give me Ezekiel 35, verse 1 real quick. I got about 10 more minutes. Ezekiel 35, 1 through 5. And then we're going to get um, Genesis on Mount Seir and then Psalms. And then I'm going to end it. And then... Um, the Tuesday after the next Tuesday, I'll end it. Um, I'll begin it with part two. I right, read that what you got. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 1. Uh huh. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir mm -hmm. and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. And I will stretch out my head against thee. So God said, Mount Seir. So who is Mount Seir that God is, has made prophecy to come up against? And let's read what else God is going to do. He said he's going to come up against them. Read on. And I will make thee most desolate. God said he's going to destroy them. Read. I will lay thy cities waste. It says he will lay thy cities waste. Didn't we read about this earlier? The cities, the built up cities that they built during the 14th through the 17th century. By the, 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 um, the, what the name of that family? Um, the Medici family. When they built up everything during the Renaissance era and came into power. God saying it again in Ezekiel because the prophets knew the, the same exact message. Read what you got. That lets you know God don't change. Read. I will lay thy cities waste and thou shalt be desolate. Uh -huh. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Uh-huh. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. Because Esau still to this day and all the other nations too still hate our guts. Read what you got. It has shed the blood of the children of Israel uh -huh. by the force of the sword. By the force of what? Of the sword. Remember God made him the sword. Read. In the time of their calamity. In the time of our calamity when we was being destroyed. Read. In the time that their iniquity had it in. It was time for our iniquity to be over with. But Esau said, no, not just yet. 
I got a lot more in me, a lot more rage, a lot more hatred that I got to show this nation. And God said, okay, do what you got to do. I'll get you at the end. All right, so from there, go to Genesis 36, read verse 8 and 9. Let's get who Mount Sira is. And you're going to be like, oh, okay, this is the same person. So God really don't change. No. The only people change is us. We change all God to a God that is vanity. Turn from the one true God. But read what you got. 36 verse 8 through 9. Genesis chapter 36 verse 8. Uh-huh. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Uh-huh. Esau is Edom. Esau is who? Edom. Esau is Edom. He dwelt in Mount Seir. So he's talking about the same nation of people that we read about in Malachi. Where God said, I got something for you. You're going to be here, but I'm going to tear down. You the wickedness. He said he's the border of wickedness, meaning the beginning and the end of all wickedness. Read what you got. All right, was that it? And these are the generations of Esau. Uh Uh-huh. The father of the Edomites. I told you he was the father of the Edomites. Read. In Mount Seir. Hey, real quick, go to Google and look up Mount Seir. And we're going to end it right there. We're going to end it right there, and uh, we'll come back with part two. Lord's willing. Lord, say the same. Because we got to get the end goal. We got to get us keeping the commandment, what's going to happen, and what's going to be the end goal. Because I know Israel, we like a good storyline, a good movie. We, we some movie-watching people. But we got to read more, including myself. Images. I just want images. Blow them up. Go, go down. It's, it's one that I'm looking for. Keep going down. Ah, that one right there on the right. Come on, yeah, yeah, that one, right there, yeah, blow that one up. Oh, Mount Seir. Remember, we call them Caucasians for a reason, because they're cave dwellers from Georgia, Russia, over there in the Caucasus, the Caucasus Mountains. All right, so look, now it's, it's, give me the one where you can kind of see the mountains around it. So they carved it, yeah, they car- right there, they carved it in a mountain, and they was actually living in, in these caves. You know, and look, you got, all, you got a lot of Edomites out there. They come over there, and it's a tourist attraction. But um, it's going to be a time where we run them right back in them same caves that we're looking at right now. And... Uh, we're going to be able to see them, and we're going to go in there and get them. Yeah. Shout out to Captain Galilee for hunters, because that's what we're going to become. We're going to become hunters, Israel. But we can't become hunters and get the benefits of this Bible if we ain't keeping God's laws. So, hey, Israel, we are going to end it right there. Like I said, it'll be a continuation of this class. Remember the name of the class when God turn his back and show his wrath. Don't be the one that God looked down on earth and he becomes wrathful against you and spew you out, destroy you. All right. Also, I like to give all honors to the most high God. I like to give du- double honors to the general, Bishop Nathaniel, for the spirit that the most high bestowed upon that brother and the rest of the bishop, Bishop Yahweh, Bishop Kanai as well, to bring this truth to where it is today to put spirits on brothers like myself and other brothers all the way around the earth to be in one with God to get the kingdom. We tired of being tired. And when I mean tired of being tired, we tired of not ruling. And I also would like to give honors to the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, the MOV, the brothers, the sisters, the kids, the entire nation letting us know Come back to keeping God's laws so we won't bring God to wrath. Hey, with that, Israel, I will say shalom. I see Memphis, Officer Daniel.